Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Samsers multi-device wireless keyboard and mouse. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So if we look at the back here, it says multi-device seamless switching. So you can connect this up to, I think, three different devices. It has a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle or two different Bluetooth devices. It has multifunctional storage group. So that's a place you can put your mobile phone scissor switch buttons, long battery life, multimedia control. So let's get this open. So here's the user manual. Here are the package contents as one dual mode wireless keyboard, one dual mode wireless mouse, one 2.4 gigahertz USB receiver, type C charging cable, silicone keyboard cover, and a user manual. So here are the specs, the keyboard and mouse, they both support Bluetooth 5.0. They both can connect with 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth, and that can support two Bluetooth devices each. Here are the dimensions. I'll let you read that if you want. The operating range is 32.8 feet. The battery capacity is 280 milliamp hours in the keyboard and 300 in the mouse. Charging time is two to three hours. Uninterrupted working time in the keyboard is 90 hours and 60 hours in the mouse. Standby time is 190 days in the keyboard and 330 days in the mouse. The DPI range on the mouse is 800, 1200, 1600, and 2400. And this works on Windows, Android, iOS, and Mac OS. This would also work on Linux and other devices that use Bluetooth keyboards and mice or USB keyboards and mice. So this should work on pretty much any modern system. And this should even work on very old systems too if they support USB. So this talks about the different lights here. We have the 2.4 gigahertz wireless channel indicator indicator, Bluetooth 1, Bluetooth 2, caps lock indicator, power indicator, power switch, and charging port. Here's the mouse. We have a scroll wheel, DPI switch, charging indicator. That's on top. On the bottom, we have the charging port, power switch, forward back key, channel indicator, channel switch key, and connect key. This talks about the lights on the keyboard. When you turn it on, the light will light up for three seconds and turn off. So that's probably for energy saving purposes. It says the keyboard will enter sleep mode after being idle for 30 minutes. Press any key to wake it up. To charge it, connect the charge cable. It talks about keys and functions. Okay, so here's a chart. So these are for the multimedia keys. So you press the function button and then escape F1, F2, these buttons here to do these things. So you're going to see a lot of the same things across different platforms. And it has a, looks like a battery button. It says press this key to check the battery reminder. Indicator flashes once for 25%, twice for 50, three times for 75, and four times for 100%. So this talks about the 2.4 gigahertz channel connection. This talks about Bluetooth pairing, and I will demonstrate that. And we have FAQ there. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So there's a silicone keyboard cover. So if this is in kind of a dirty place, like if you have it in a shop, or maybe you eat around your keyboard a lot, or a dusty environment, you could put this on there to protect your keyboard. Keyboard itself, and here's the mouse. And here's the charge cable. So it only comes with one charge cable for the mouse and keyboard. So you can't charge them at the same time with the included cables. So you have to charge one than the other. I don't think that's going to be a huge deal because they're not going to go down at the exact same time. Although you can just use any USB-C cable to charge both. And the cable's a little over 30 inches. Let's get this out of here. I'm not going to use the silicone cover right now, but I'll demonstrate it in case people are interested. So it fits over like that and you can still press the keys through it. Okay, let's get a closer look at this. So here are the keys. This is a side view. So it looks like when I press them, here's that slot. So that slot allows you to put something like a phone in there. Now this phone does have a case on it. So I'm guessing a slimmer case would work. I'm guessing a large like uh, waterproof case probably would not fit in there, but you can fit it in either way like this or this. And if you aren't aware, you can connect up a keyboard like this to pretty much any smartphone. You go into the Bluetooth settings and you can set this up. So say you're in a hotel room or something and you want to type something out, you could pull out a keyboard like this, hook your phone up and you practically have a computer here. Or maybe you're just sitting at your desk and you're on your phone and you're typing up an email on your phone. You just happen to be. You can hit a button over here to the Bluetooth for your phone and then continue using it on your phone. So that's a handy feature. You could also put a pen there too. So here are the lights. USB-C charging is in the end. Now, if we flip it over, we're going to see rubber feet on the four corners here. Looks like there's a little nub there also to keep the center up. And then we have the USB dongle here in the middle. So it looks like that's kind of a friction fit in there. So if I tap on that, yeah, that will fall out, which is fine. Normally you wouldn't tap on that. That's just something you'd be aware of that if you have this in your car or something and it's bouncing around, you want to be aware that this can just come out so you don't lose it. But it does stay in there pretty good. I had to hit it pretty hard to get it out. And here's the mouse. We have right and left mouse buttons. So these are very quiet clicks. It's very hard to hear. I know some people like really clicky mice and some people like quieter mice. The middle scroll wheel also clicks. That's a little louder. But the scrolling 
is pretty smooth. You can feel little indentations there, but they're very subtle. And then we have the DPI button here in the middle, and then we have the extra buttons here. Those are usually like forward, back in the browser. On the bottom, we have on off switch, and this is the mode change button here. It's kind of recessed, so you have to press on it pretty hard. Not enough to hurt your finger. I'm just saying it's below the surface. And then we have the charge port up here. So let's connect this up to a couple different things. So one thing I really like about this is we just have one dongle to connect up the keyboard and mouse to a device. So here I have a MacBook Pro, and I just want to connect this up temporarily. I don't want to buy with the Bluetooth settings. So what I'll do is I can use the USB dongle. I can just plug it in here and I will turn the keyboard on here with the switch. I'll turn the mouse on and a Mac will go through this setting here. So I'll go down here, I'll hit continue. I'll go through this procedure and I'm using the mouse here and now it's all set up. So if I hit command space bar, it's not opening up spotlight. So what I want to do for the instructions, we look here, I want to press function Q to set it up for Mac OS. So I'll do that. I'll hit function Q. Now I'll hit command space bar. And now we're doing spotlight search. So if I didn't do that, I'd have to go into my settings and swap out the modifier keys and such. So that's really nice that that has that feature on there. So I can do that. I can open up Safari here. I'll open up a website, say here. Okay, so I have a news website here. I can scroll up and down. So I'm scrolling here with the mouse. It's very smooth scrolling. And of course I can right click too. Let me open up a text editor. Okay, that worked well. So I find when I switch keyboards, sometimes it can be a little tricky and I have to get used to it. Makes, it usually takes like a half day, but this one's pretty standard. So I'm guessing I would adjust this incredibly easy. I probably wouldn't have any issues. So it also has those media keys. So here I'm pressing the brightness button. Here's mute, volume down and up. There's play pause. I don't want to mess with that because that might open some music or something. We have search does spotlight. So one thing I did not mention is that when I plug this in, it just worked. But what you do is when you want to switch sources, you hit these buttons here. So here we have the 2.4 gigahertz, Bluetooth 1, Bluetooth 2. Okay, so we have this paired up to this computer and we can use it here. But let's pair it up to a second device. And I'm not going to pair it to a computer this time. I'm going to pair it to a different device. So here I have a Fire TV stick and this supports Bluetooth keyboards and mice. So I'm going to go into the settings here. I'm going to go into controllers and Bluetooth devices. I'm going to go to other Bluetooth devices, add Bluetooth devices. On the keyboard here, I'm going to press the Bluetooth one, and then I'm going to hold it down for five seconds. And actually, this will set up pretty quickly because it's not paired with anything. So we have Bluetooth five keyboard here. I'll hit that. It says pairing device. It says it's connected. Now I'll do the same on the mouse. I'll go to add Bluetooth devices. Sorry, that's blurred there. And then I'll go here and I'll switch this to the second one, and it's flashing, I think this will actually show up automatically. So if it doesn't automatically try to pair, hold it down, it will turn it into pairing mode. So now I can use my keyboard to navigate this. So I'm not using the remote, I'm using the keyboard. Let's get out of here, I'll hit the home button on the top of the keyboard. I'll hit the search button on the top of the keyboard. Now I'm having to hold down the function with the search. So I'm holding FN and then search here. Now I haven't played around with the Windows mode or Mac. It's still in the Mac mode, but here I can type something in. Let me think, I'll type silk browser. So I type silk, I can press down. Now some things the mouse will work with, some they won't, but I'll hit enter here, I'll hit enter. And here we have the Silk Browser. So the scroll wheel is working on the mouse. It doesn't seem like the mouse pointer is. So that's something to keep in mind is when you connect a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse from this company or any other company, support in Fire TV Stick can be limited. So this can be a great way to enter in passwords and such on your Fire TV Stick. And that's the beauty of this keyboard. So let's switch back down here and we have the Mac here. So say I was working, I need to go enter a password on my Fire TV Stick. I can hit Bluetooth one and go enter that password. And then when I'm done, I can hit the 2.4 gigahertz again. And now I'm back in on my Mac. I need to go back to the Fire TV stick, hit that button again, and I'm back on the Fire TV stick. So you can have three devices there. And then here on the mouse, I'll hit this button. This is a little harder to see. Now we're back on 2.4 gigahertz. So if you're using this keyboard with two devices and you have that spare Bluetooth you're not using, a handy thing you can do is connect it up to something like a Fire TV stick. So that's the Samsung's multi-device wireless keyboard mouse. While this would work great for a daily keyboard and mouse, what I'm probably going to be using this for is on my tech bench here. And a really nice feature about that 
is I can just plug this into any computer I'm working on and have a keyboard and mouse just like that. Right now I use a smaller keyboard and mouse with an integrated touchpad and it's awful to type on. The only reason I use it is because it has a single dongle for the touchpad and the keyboard. This will give me a traditional keyboard and mouse and I only have one thing to connect into it. And if I want to connect something a little more permanently, I can set up Bluetooth. So I can have this set up on a computer and then when I want to use it on another computer, I can use this part, use this just for temporary use and then take it back to its normal keyboard. So this thing is just super versatile in how you can use it. And like I mentioned before, you can hook it into a Fire TV stick. This would also work with Playstations, Xboxes, tablets, iPads, Android, you name it. And all those devices will connect with Bluetooth. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.